สวัสดีครับ Good afternoon once again. Today is Monday, the 26th of July, 2021, and this is the English language summary of the daily press briefing here at the Center for COVID Situation Administration. So, thank you to Dr. Pisa Mai. The Thai version that we had just now, she focused on a couple of important uh, issues. Uh, firstly, of course, the uh, bed capacity of the various uh, hospitals and the various field hospitals that we have. They are accommodating various types of patients, from those with mild symptoms to severe symptoms. Uh, we call it the light green, and dark green, yellow, and red beds. Uh, and the, of course, the capacity of beds has to be increased in, in due course, and we're working very, very hard on, on that. Now, related to that is, of course, the enhancing of the capacity of the home isolation and community isolation. These, these schemes are, have been put in place uh, to, for those who uh, have been found to be uh, infected and uh, positive, and those, for, for those who are awaiting for the hospital beds in the various hospitals. Now this uh, is, of course, being uh, used in parallel with the ATK, the antigen test kit, and all of the medical personnel involved. So hopefully the Home isolation and community isolation will be able to sort of like uh, facilitate uh, those who are in need of medical attention initially at the outset before they are placed into the proper medical facilities. So Dr. p i s a m a i talked about that, uh, the enhancement of that capacity, that of those uh, isolation schemes, uh, in length just now. I'd like to talk about the vaccination progress first. According to our national vaccination drive, which started in February 2021, now yesterday, which was a weekend, we administered 90,934 doses of vaccine, increasing the accumulated number of vaccination to over 15.9 million doses, as you see on screen. You might notice that on weekends, the vaccination numbers are not as high as those on the weekdays. Nevertheless, we're continuing with our vaccination plan to vaccinate the uh, highest number of people. The Ministry of Public Health has adjusted the vaccination distribution plan, as as you have already known, on focusing on vaccinating the elderly and those with patients with seven high-risk underlying diseases to reduce the severity of the illness and the risk of death. Now, in the elderly population of around 13 million in Thailand, um, the 1.8 million in Bangkok, and 11.8 million in other provinces. Now, for this group of elderly, over 10% have already been vaccinated, while older people in Bangkok need to be inoculated quickly. That's why we have all of these schemes. But in general, in Bangkok, over 59% have already. Received at least their first dose. A little bit on AstraZeneca and Pfizer, which may be of interest to the English language audience. With regard to AstraZeneca, planning to deliver 11.3 million doses to Thailand by the end of July, as part of the overall commitment to deliver 61 million doses to Thailand. As of now, 9 million have been delivered, and an additional. 2.3 million will be supplied to the Ministry of Public Health this week. Now, the managing director of AstraZeneca explained that the vaccine is a biological product, which starts with the growing of living ingredients. This can lead to an uncertain supply, especially in the early stages. However, AstraZeneca projected that in the months of uninterrupted manufacturing, it can supply five to six. Million doses in Thailand, adding that the company is also scouring the 20-plus supply chains in its worldwide manufacturing network to find additional vaccine doses for Southeast Asia, including Thailand. The Thai government and its partners in the quest for the health security realize that it is crucial to take a regional approach in order to resolve the COVID crisis and strengthen herd immunity in Thailand and beyond Thailand. For Pfizer. In addition to Astra, 1.5 million doses of Pfizer have been donated by the United States, as you know, uh, and expected to arrive this week. Pfizer vaccine will be distributed to six target groups. You have an infographic there, courtesy of the Bangkok Post. These six target groups include 
frontline medical personnel uh, as a booster shot, that's 500,000 doses. Adults aged over 60 and people with underlying health conditions, pregnant women, 800,000 doses. Elderly foreign residents and elderly, and sorry, and people with underlying and foreign nationals with underlying health conditions, that's 150,000 doses, you see that on screen. People requiring vaccination before traveling abroad, like students, athletes, 45,000 doses. Related agencies for research approved by the Ethics Committee, 5,000 doses. And the CDC reserve uh, is 40,000 doses for any further outbreak. That's for emergency purposes. Now, of course, on social media, we have received some questions and some comments. If you see on the middle of this infographic uh, by the Bangkok Post, you would see that foreign residents of Thailand are in that group. Now, this is for the elderly foreign residents and foreign residents with underlying health diseases. This priority is the same priority that we have for Thai nationals at the moment. You see in the second uh, line, the second box from, from the top, that's for Thai nationals. The third one from the top, just a down one box, that's for foreign nationals, same criteria. So in terms, of, in terms of the practical, actual vaccination, I'd just like to recap that a bit on the vaccination for foreign residents in Thailand. And to emphasize the information here that foreign nationals aged 75 and above residing in Bangkok, Nakhon Patom, Nontaburi, Patum Thani, Samut Prakan, and Samut Sakhon can walk in for vaccination from nine to four daily, uh, via gate two of the Central Vaccination Center, which is at the Bang Su Grand Station in Bangkok. Passport or official ID will have to be presented. Now this is 75 plus walk-in at Bang Su. Uh, for foreign nationals aged 60 to 74 residing in Bangkok and the surrounding provinces who have not yet received the vaccine, you are requested to pre-register for vaccines online uh, via the uh, link from the Department of Consular Affairs and Ministry of Foreign Affairs registration form. The center will notify the registered persons of the appointment by email or SMS, and of course, passport and official ID will have to be presented. Now, mind you that these are at, both are at Bang Su Grand Station, and both are for the elderly. 60 plus pre-register, 75 plus walk-in, and this is for those residing in Bangkok and the surrounding provinces. Now that being said, if you recall that prior to this Bang Su scheme, the Ministry of Public Health had this portal which is what's called thailandintervac.com. Just an update on thailandintervac.com, that foreign nationals, foreign residents, if you are in the underlying medical conditions group, if you are a pregnant woman, if you are the elderly, um, you can pre-register through thailandintervac.com at designated hospitals. This is how it, it is. The thailandintervac.com will lead you to the pre-registration sites of various private hospitals that are within, that are under the scheme of thailandintervac.com. These hospitals range from those in Bangkok as well as in some provinces around the country already. So this is a second uh, option, portal, for those who are seeking to vaccinate, for nationals seeking to vaccinate through the thailandintervac.com. The hospitals that thailandintervac.com will lead you to, it's in their page, are the following. Samitiwet Sukhumvit, BNH Hospital, Med Park, Priya Thai 2, Vimut Hospital, Bamrung Rad, in, all in Bangkok. And also, Samitiwet Siracha in Shonburi Province, Bangkok Phuket Hospital in Phuket, Bangkok Konken Hospital in Konken Province, Bangkok Vaccination and Health Center in Bangkok. So further details, please see the update in thailandintervac.com. It is constantly being updated, constantly the information is constantly being updated in this portal because of the hospitals that have entered the scheme and have been ready for pre-registration for foreign nationals. Aside from the Bang Su scheme and the thailandintervac.com scheme, foreign nationals of all age groups residing outside high-risk areas, such as Bangkok, Samut Prakan, 
So it's Sakon and the nearby provinces may register for vaccination with hospitals where they have prior medical records at the earliest convenience. And the public health offices in all provinces of Thailand have been informed of this already. And of course, must present all the documents ready for the, the appointment. All of these measures are part of Thailand's national efforts to ensure that all foreign residents, nationals living on Thai soil will be given access to vaccines in accordance with our national vaccination campaign. Just some numbers for you on Bangsu, that during the 19th through 24th of July in Bangsu Grand Station, the central vaccination center in Bangkok, it provided services to 852 foreign residents. That's from the 19th to the 24th of July. Now on the 25th of July yesterday, which was the first date for the vaccination appointment for those 60 years and above, the center vaccinated already an additional 1,516 foreign residents in one day, yesterday alone. So the accumulated number of foreign residents, 60 plus and 75 plus walk-in, who have been vaccinated at the center is now at 2,368. The elderly foreign nationals foreign residents group. Turning to the general situation and the new confirmed case that we have for today, 15,376, as you see on screen in the blue box on the left. This number out of this, 1,041 are those uh, inmates found in the penitentiaries. We have active cases, cases still being treated, currently being treated in Thailand at the moment at 167,057. We have new fatalities, a bit less than the other days, at 87, making the accumulated total of fatalities at 4,146. Of course, one fatality is something to be very sorrowful about, and we hope that this number will not be rising. The fatality rate, uh, fatality rate, risk rate, now in Thailand stands at 0.81%. As for the provincial distribution, geographic distribution, we have found cases currently in all provinces of Thailand. We continue to find all provinces of Thailand having new cases each day. There are now 142 clusters of infections in Bangkok alone, as well as new cases from clusters in the provinces of Ayutthaya, Samut Sakon, Lopburi, Radburi, Saraburi and Cha Cheung Sao provinces. Most of these new clusters emerged from manufacturing plants and factories. And in addition, new clusters have also been detected in Rayong, Nakhon, Si Tamarat, and Supanburi province. In general, almost 80% of patients that we find today are asymptomatic or have mild symptoms. The response teams, if you, if you recall, we talked about that, the Comprehensive COVID Response Team, or CCRT, have been busy at work. Visiting, an update is visiting 57 communities today to vaccinate residents. So that's the rapid mobile unit. And the active case finding, of course, continue in the high risk areas in many provinces. And during the, from the first to the 26th of July, in a span of four months, around four months, we have had 116,595 active case findings already conducted. So, of course, all of this, uh, we hope that the numbers will not expand further. We hope that all our work, our rapid mobile, our home community, community, oh, sorry, home and community isolation schemes, the ATK antigen test kits, and all of our vaccination efforts will bear fruit. We hope that soon the numbers will not expand on a daily basis. It is therefore very pertinent that we continue to keep strong and continue to tighten the measures that we have put in place. As you know, the Thai cabinet agreed to extend the emergency decree nationwide for two more months until the 30th of September, 2021. And the Royal Gazette published this 
this announcement on the 23rd of July 2021 already, citing that despite the unprecedented efforts on public health services in Thailand, despite the mass vaccination program that covers everybody, and the restrictions to contain the pandemic, the recent spread of Delta variant of COVID in various clusters in Bangkok and surrounding provinces justifies the need to extend the state of emergency. This will allow authorities to step up efforts on disease surveillance and investigation, as well as to curb local transmissions for the health and safety of everyone in the country. Of course, the extension of the de emergency decree and the extension of all the measures, the lockdown, the curfew that we have, is not something that we want to extend for uh, an extended uh, have for an extended period of, of time. Definitely, uh, definitely. But but COVID is long from being gone globally. Now, of course, Thailand is no exception. So we hope that with the with a hopeful kind of uh, outlook and, and approach. We hope that all our efforts will work. We hope that uh, we cont will continue to be strong in our enforcement and we hope for the cooperation of all sectors of society. Now when I talk about hope, of course, that's a generic thing. When I talk about hope, sometimes there are things on social media saying it's not about hope. Of course, it's not only about hope. It's about enforcement. It's about discipline. It's about your cooperation as well. So the Public Health Ministry has issued some infographics on the procedures for self-quarantine. I'd like to show a bit of that on screen. They have that in English, in Burmese, Lao, and Cambodian language. So these are for self-quarantine, home quarantine, do's and don'ts. And you can find that on the Facebook page of the Public Health Ministry. And just to remind, for those who uh, work with uh, foreign nationals in Thailand, uh, workers, migrant workers as well, or those who speak uh, the languages of our neighboring country. The hotline is 1422. Uh, that is for migrant workers from Myanmar, Laos, and Cambodia to access any information or advice regarding the COVID situation. The Ministry of Public Health is also making arrangements for more hospital beds, as I, as I said in the outset. Uh, or even hotels converted into hospital beds and more field hospital beds to cope with the surging number of cases. And in addition, the health ministry is survey surveying areas for more expanded, more community isolation. For example, in the districts in Bangkok, like in Lat Prao, Bang Na, and Rangsit. So looking forward to that for more facilities more facilities for various communities to be able to have isolation communities for those awaiting for hospital beds. So just in closing, just to encourage once again all our foreign friends, foreign residents of Thailand in risk groups, those who are in risk groups that are of priority right now to register for vaccination at the earliest convenience and to reassure all foreign nationals that we will have an online registration platform for those younger than 60 years old next month. So if you listen to my briefing carefully, we had a couple of schemes, Bangsu in, for those in the Bangkok area, 60 plus, 75 plus, thailandinteract.com, as well as the directives sent to the various uh, health officials in the various provinces that they uh, have to facilitate the vaccination of foreign nationals as well. So these various schemes, of course, in addition to the private hospitals uh, providing services, these additional, these, all these schemes are very uh, important and they go along with the priority that we are attaching, of course, to the elderly and those with underlying diseases first. Same priority as those we, that we have with Thai nationals. I repeat, same priority. It's just that we have sometimes a separate scheme or a separate facility for foreign nationals to facilitate you to the specifics. Because of course, communication is very important and some of our staff would be more prepared and ready if it's set for, to receive uh, foreign, foreign nationals. We might have translators as well as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Public Health officials to come and assist foreign nationals in terms of the communication with the medical staff and the nurses. So that's very important that we have uh, specific, specific special 
uh, or separate facilities for, for, for nationals. So we're trying to do our best to make everything uh, run smoothly. And we've received a lot of feedback from social media that the Bangsu uh, Grand Station's uh, vaccination scheme had been uh, smooth for foreign nationals. And as I said, uh, to the thousands of around 2,000 have already been vaccinated there. Now, at the end of this month or early next month, we will be starting a scheme for those who are younger than 60 years old, for nationals who have not received their vaccination to date already. They have not uh, informed their provincial hospital. They have not uh, been uh, vaccinated uh, through the organizational arrangements, uh, through the organization or specific groups, uh, student, foreign students, diplomats, and like for those who are not in these groups or who have not been availed of vaccination at private hospitals or any of the other past schemes, we'll have that to, to pick all of you up in terms of the registration for those younger than six years old. So looking forward to that. I'd like to end with an infographic by the World Health Organization to emphasize that even after vaccination, public health and safety measures against COVID should still be respected to protect yourself, your family, and friends by keeping distance, wearing masks, of course, cleaning hands frequently, and avoid poorly ventilated areas. It's very important for us to continue to respect these measures even after getting vaccinated. Uh, two, the two doses or one dose or even after a booster shot. So with that, I thank you for your attention and we'll see you again next time. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Sadiqab.